In this guide for Advanced Wars Reboot Camp, new recruits will learn important tips that will improve their military strategy. As someone who has played the original multiple times, there are lots of little quirks in Advanced Wars AI and various mechanics ready to be exploited. We'll start with some basics first. My first tip is how to speed up gameplay a bit, so any cutscene like this dialogue you can skip by holding start. Once you skip, you can then go into the option menu when you're in the battle and you can turn the animations off. Uh, turning the animation off, they take a long time in this game. Sometimes it's just easier to keep them off and then your turns will look more like this. The last thing you want to do to speed up the game is you can hold the ZR button while the enemy's turn is advancing and that will fast forward the turn for them. Be sure to familiarize yourself with each unit type. By selecting a unit type, you can check their stats like movement, vision, fuel, and ammo. The movement can be hindered by terrain, and so can vision, so keep those in mind when you're looking at these numbers. Each unit can also run out of fuel, ammo, or both, so you'll need to refill these using a city tile, a base, or an APC unit. Air and naval units will sink or crash if they run out of fuel. Units like a submarine use up extra fuel when they're submerged. You need a plan on how to refuel these units if the battle prolongs. A unit without ammo will either do reduced damage with a backup weapon like the machine gun, or it will be unable to attack entirely. This screen will also give you tips on which units that particular one can hit and their effectiveness against. Healing your units is crucial, as your attack power is dependent on your unit's health. Make sure to get a unit to one of your cities to heal. Each turn, they will regain two points of health when resting at a city. If you have Handy, his CO power does this for every unit on the field at once. It's also useful to combine two injured units of the same type, as their HPs will be added together and be useful in battle much quicker than resting on a city tile. Don't wait too long to use a CO's power. Each CO has a unique power that can turn the tide of battle. You will fill a bar as you play a map, and once the bar is full, your power is available to use whenever. Don't try to save these for the absolute perfect moment, as likely, that will never come. Often, the later you wait to use it, the less units you have that will benefit from the power, and the less overall times you'll get to use the power per map. The bar fills based on damage dealt and damage received. The later you are into battle, naturally there'll be less units and less points to go toward this bar. Now, this rule can vary, but more often than not, I try to use a CEO power soon after I charge it, unless clearly obvious it would be useless to do so. For the main story of Advance Wars 1, I recommend using Max if you're having trouble with the game. He is just kind of the strongest CEO. His 50% buff on all direct combat units is like incredibly useful, well worth the trade-off of the indirect units getting a 10% debuff and minus one range. The amount of situations where harder hitting direct combat is more useful than ranged is probably the most common situation in the game. So unless the map is designed around indirect combat units, which there are a few, Max will be an easier choice for beginners. Andy is a jack of all trades, so also a good beginner choice with no major negatives or positives. While Sammy is a very situational CO, best deployed when capturing the HQ of the enemy quickly as part of your strategy or objective, considering the buff she gives to infantry units. The toughest maps for beginners are always going to be Fog of War maps. These maps occlude your vision, and without knowledge of enemy positions, you're going to have a tough time. If you go into your first attempt trying to win, it's easy to waste a lot of time and get frustrated. I suggest throwing caution to the wind and treating that first attempt like a scouting mission. When starting a Fog of War map, just gather intel, wildly push into unknown areas and see where the enemy army is positioned. You can freely reset the turn in this remake or just restart the battle altogether, this time with added strategic knowledge. Other Fog of War tips are actually utilizing forest tiles. The original Advance Wars Fog of War balancing was not implemented correctly as your enemy wasn't affected by the fog. No matter what you did, they could just see your units. Now, that seemingly has been fixed for the remake, and so forest tiles prove vital in traversing the map as they hide your unit from enemy view unless a unit is directly adjacent to them. Remember, each unit has a unique vision range you can check on the map. Rely on your recon units, your tanks, your B-copters, and your submarines for longer vision range 
and position infantry units on mountains to increase their vision range to 5 as well. Fog of War should be much easier when considering these tips. One of the most important strategies in any Advanced Wars map is blocking enemy choke points and trapping enemies. Use your units to strategically limit your enemy's movement. When an enemy unit must defeat one of your units to progress forward, this would count as a choke point. Oftentimes, if your defending unit is stronger than the attacking unit in front of it, the AI won't actually try to attack you. For instance, this medium tank I've placed here. The normal tank gets into position to attack, but never does. This is perfect because as long as I don't defeat this tank, it's gonna block any direct combat unit from getting close enough to attack me. My ranged attackers now only have to worry about the enemy's indirect combat units, while all these dangerous tank units just stand in line behind the scared one. Now, if you can't block, bait your enemies. By checking the enemy range, you can bait them into aggressive tactics. A quirk in Advanced Wars AI is that they aggressively target APC units. Sacrificially baiting either a ranged rocket or an incoming tank with an APC nearby your offensive will likely lead the enemy right into a real threat. I don't know why they ignore all the real threats and go for the defenseless APC unit, but APC units being injured don't really affect their performance as they can't engage in combat, and they're also very cheap to produce if they do get destroyed. Baiting the enemy will allow your offensive units to get in range to destroy an enemy or bring the enemy closer in order to pick them off with a range unit of your own. You can actually ford rivers with an infantry unit. They're the only unit in the game that can do this who can walk over this single water tile. Fording the river is always important because you can get your infantry unit to the main goal that they're useful for which is capturing bases. Now another way to quickly maneuver your infantry units over a river is you can actually load and unload without wasting a turn with the infantry unit. So load them into the APC, unload them that same turn, they get an extra movement doing that. Score chasing is a fun part of Advance Wars. Speed, power, and technique are the categories that affect your rank. Speed and power are self-explanatory, usually dependent on the specific map and how long you take to beat them and how much damage you inflicted along the way. These two will often improve as you replay a mission and gain more knowledge. Knowing where the enemies are and how they respond to certain units can improve these stats. Technique though is a bit tricky. It's related to the relative units you lost to that of the enemy. One way to quickly increase technique is on that final push to the objective. You know, those last few turns where victory is assured, but there's just that one straggler you need to off, or you're just waiting on an infantry unit to capture an HQ. If you have access to a factory, you should be spamming units. Just create a bunch of cheap units every turn until the objective is complete. By producing as many units as possible, your technique score will raise as your units compared to the enemy's units will also get higher. My last tip is that there are multiple story paths in Advance Wars. While the remake has made it less important which specific route you take, there are mission paths you won't play depending on the CEOs you choose for a specific mission or the objective you use to win certain missions. Going back and replaying missions with a different CO is part of the fun of this game. These games are meant to be replayed over and over again, and as you learn them, the more fun they get. And those are the 11 tips that will hopefully improve your time with Advance Wars on Nintendo Switch. Thank you for watching, and for more guides, news, reviews, and everything else Nintendo, subscribe to Nintendo Everything.